In today's Brandy video, I'm gonna help you understand age of Brandy a little bit better. I'm gonna help you understand the difference between your VS and your XO. Because very rarely on a bottle of Brandy will you see any numbers identifying an age on the front. Traditionally, it's letters. Hello, Brandy lovers, welcome back. But for those of you that are new around these parts, hello, my name is Steve DeBarman, bartender for 30 years, Brandy lover for 25 years, except because Brandy is a little bit low key, I've never really deep dived properly. I've just enjoyed what I've enjoyed. So that's what this channel is all about going down a brandy journey and educating myself. So if that sounds like fun, if you want to join me, then make sure you hit that subscribe button. But don't forget, I've now got five other YouTube channels, all with their own specific niches, and that's and they will all be linked in the description below. So in the last video, I did say there is a lot more to brandy than just cognac, but for this video, I'm going to sort of defer to cognac a little bit because these are the guys, cognac, the region that has the definitive legal clarifications, if we want, or classifications, I should say, of brandy ages. And a lot of countries, a lot of brandies, a lot of companies, a lot of distillers around the world do kind of follow their lead, if you like. So for this, we are going more cognac, but this does sort of translate to most other brandies, not necessarily fruit brandies, but proper brandies, grape brandies around the world. Yes, I should include Armagnac in this reason as well, because Armagnac do have their rules. It is only really Cognac and Armagnac that have AOC, as in rules, Appellation de Origin de Controle. Now, I don't know why I've got a bottle of Pierre France uh, here, because Pierre France don't actually follow these um, the, the kind of guidelines, the VS, the VSOP, and the XO. They don't. They just have their own specific names. But that's really the only kind of brand I've got there with any great authority behind there. So let's, let's start off with a very VS. VS stands for very special. Now, the equivalent to VS in brandy world, in, even in French brandy world, because don't forget, French brandy outside of cognac and armagnac can't be called cognac or armagnac, just French brandy. French brandy, and to a certain extent, Spanish brandy, actually adopts three stars. Okay, and that's loosely the same thing. I don't know where three stars come from because it makes no sense, but... VS and three stars mean the brandy has been aged for a minimum of two years. Now, there's something I also need to sort of get you to understand here. That is most cognacs, most brandies, uh, especially that, are actually blends. It's not that one brandy in here, one distillation has been aged in two years. It's the minimum. Okay, quite a light rum to that to a certain extent. They've got different batches of distilled brandy that would go into making a VS, but the minimum it has to be aged is two years. So that's VS, very special, or three stars. Now the thing with VS and three stars is traditionally speaking, although many people do sip this neat, I'll be honest, it is primarily seen as the lower grade of brandy. It's therefore mixing, and in a lot of cases, cooking. Not many people Brandy enthusiasts would actually go down the route of drinking a VS or a three star neat. Now, for me, I actually don't mind that because I like the fruitiness that comes off of this before any wood has kind of imparted its flavour. So there's no right or wrong on that, but in the general scheme of things, your VSs, your, your three stars are seen as the lowest kind of common denominator mixes cooking. Now to go up to your VSOP, your VSOP traditionally stood for very superior old pale. Now VS, very special, VSOP, very superior. Now that has kind of, there's no right or wrong with this, but that has kind of transitioned into very special old pale these days. So both of these are very special. I don't know why one was very special and one was very superior. I don't know, but that's just kind of how it's progressed. Now, both of these are loosely classed as very special old pale. The minimum agent of that is four years, and this would be a five star as well. So if you see French and Spanish brandy, this says a five star. This is their equivalent to a VSOP. Minimum age of four years. Five star, four years. I don't really don't get that. Now, again, to a lot of, you know, a lot of French, a lot of people around the world, you know, a VSOP is slightly superior quality to a VS, but many people would use it to mix and better cooking. <laughs> better the brandy, the better the cooking, the dish is going to taste. You know, 
To a lot of people, a VSOP is still not in the realms of sipping neat. So if you are going to be drinking a VSOP, a lot of people would be drinking this with an ice cube, for example. But this is the kind of thing I want to get rid of and dispel on this channel. I want to make brandy accessible. So if you like drinking VSOP neat, you flipping do that. Don't be told that VSOP is still only really good for cooking because that is utter nonsense. Now, the next grade we're going to go up to is Napoleon. Now, we have got a clear grade here. Up until 20, I think it was 2016, up until 2016, Napoleon and XO were kind of hand in hand. You know, they were both minimum of six years old. However, XO, we can, I'll talk about XO now while I'm here. XO, it has, oh, well, actually, XO is now branched off. Napoleon is minimum of six years in a cask. So the minimum age, if it's a blend of brandies in there, the minimum age of a Napoleon will be six years old. And this is where people, the brandy enthusiasts, will kind of think, oh, you know what, that's getting there now for sipping neat. Still a lot of people will use it for mixers, a lot of people open ice, but a lot of Napoleons, people will quite happily sip neat. But let's come on to the XO. I don't know really why I keep getting this in. I need some other bottles in, some other brands, but to get onto the XO, XO split off officially in 2016. Before 2016, an XO was a minimum of six years. However, an XO in Brandy World, in Cognac World, in Armagnac World, now has its own clear kind of aging, and that is a minimum of 10 years. And this is now the bare minimum where Brandy enthusiasts would consider drinking it neat. For me, that is where my palate is. I do completely understand it. I do. I love my XOs. XOs is where I kind of there. It's a very different thing to rum. You know, the, the higher range rums for me, the least I like them. Actually, with brandy, it's, it kind of does go a little bit, but XO is my sweet spot. Anything older than XO, I'm kind of, mm, no, with too much wood influence in it. But it's kind of on that sweet spot. So see your XOs as minimum of 10 years, but can actually, because it's a blend, can have a lot older rums in there as well. And from XO, we now can go on to XXO. And this is again, is a new category that came in 2018 after XO split off. So with XO, you've got a minimum of 10 years. With XXO, you've got a minimum of 14 years. And the next two classifications are kind of interchangeable to a certain extent. There is no clear definitive age that one must be. These are loose terms. So we've got reserve and we've got hors d'arge. I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Hors, H-O-R-S, de, age. <laughs> hors d'arge. Now, what hors d'arge means, please? I think I'm saying that right, it means beyond age. So it loosely means that this is too old to put a name on it. However, to kind of break that down is most Horst Arsch uh, brandies are actually between 30 and 50 years old, with some of the more expensive ones being uh, having a 100-year-old brandy in the, in the kind of way. Whereas a reserve kind of hints towards an average age of 25 years. And this is where I kind of want to help you understand why some are different or some brandies are more expensive than others. Because when it comes to um, like reserves and hors d'arge and, um, and things like that, we're talking about average ages. OK, so I want you to kind of just bear with me here for a couple of seconds with an XO or an XXO. Let's, let's talk XO. An XO, put that away. That's not an XO. The XO is a minimum of 10 years. Now, with the reserve, it is an average age of 25 years, meaning if you know how to do averages, meaning that you could have an XO in there at 10 years old, but you could also have something at 40 years old in there. That would bring the average to 25 years old, if you kind of understand that. So here's something I want you to equate. If we're just talking about reserves, the lower, the cheaper reserves will have a lower average, if you know what I mean. So it'll still be 25 year olds, whereas the more expensive reserves will actually be more focused around that 25. Maybe the younger brandy in there is a 20 year old, and then the oldest is a 30 year old. So obviously, that is going to be more expensive than a reserve that has like younger in it. And that's exactly the same with Horse d'Arge because I've seen some, I'm just going to say HDA in the fear that I'm saying it wrong, but I've seen some HDAs that have, uh, that doesn't really sound right, does it? HDA. I've, I've seen that some HDAs that are 40, 50 pounds a bottle. And I've seen some that are, you know, literally 100, 140. I've seen one at 200 and some odd. 
And that will purely because be because of the base brandies in there. You know, if you've got a horse dance that's been aged between 30 and 50 years, you know, then the youngest in there could be 30, but it could have 100. It could have a, like 75-year-old brandies in there. But then the cheaper ones might just have a 30, a 32, and a 33-year-old in there, for example. So don't think all Hors d'Arge and Hall reserves should be the same price. And why is this one more expensive than another one? It will all be because of the base blends and the variance in age in the blends. But just to clarify one thing, because I was going off on tangents here, I just want to clarify this for you. I think I'm right in saying that the reserve, for example, the minimum age of that must be an XO. So a 10-year-old brandy in there, a 10-year-old cognac. It can't be like a two that I was trying. I was just trying to get the point across of how they can fluctuate. But if you're still, if you're using that, for example, in a reserve, the minimum is 10. So the cheaper reserves will have a lot more 10 and a lot lower aged in them than the more expensive ones. So for example, a reserve could have a 20 and a, a 20 year old is the minimum and a, a 20, a 30 is like the oldest. And that would be more expensive than a reserve that's got a 10 in it and a 40. And the same with the horse d'arge. Now I know I've just made that as clear as mud for you. I'm really sorry, but I kind of understand it in my own head. So if you enjoyed that, and if you want to join me more on my brand new journey, then watch this video next, because now we're finally, finally getting on to drinking some brandy. Cheers.